Well, my next guest is a master filmmaker, as well as someone who brings history to life. His work is the highest viewed presentations on public television, whether it's his series on the Civil War, baseball, his incredible soul-stirring Vietnam War series, or his most recent work entitled Country Music. It's yet another masterpiece of American culture. Take a look. It's about the melody and the sound and the voice and the sincerity of it. From director Ken Burns. Country music is truth-telling. It's everything. Hillbilly, it's blues, it's jazz. You can dance to it, you can cry to it. The people who built this country, that's where country and blues come from. It has something in it for everybody. Country music comes from right in here. This heart and soul that we all have. Country Music, a film by Ken Burns, only on PBS. Please welcome the pride of Hampshire College and the number one documentary filmmaker in all of America, as well as in Walpole, New Hampshire, Mr. Ken Burns. Ken, thank you so much for being here. I am just absolutely amazed at this latest project, Country Music. You have captured uh, the genre in a way that has not been done. What got you interested in taking on country music? I'm interested in telling stories about the U.S., capital U, capital S, and I'm also interested in stories about us, the lower case plural, plural pronoun us, and we and our. And I can't think of a subject over 40 years and nearly 40 films that I've done that hits the U.S. and the us with the same intensity as country music. Maybe the Civil War series, uh, but I don't even know. The emotional complexity of these stories, the message of country music, the the fact that it reflects who we are back at ourselves. It makes it an irresistible um, subject to try to tell, and we're so gratified by the response across the country to it uh, since its original broadcast is still being streamed on PBS. Were you a country fan prior to getting into the uh, documentary? You know, I'm a child of rhythm and blues and rock and roll. I knew this stuff. I worked in a record store in my teens and uh, before I went to college, so I, I knew Johnny Cash, who of course crossed over. I knew some of the bigger names, but I didn't know the history. And, and that's true of all the subjects I've taken on. Our corporate underwriter, Bank of America, had a little tagline connected with their promotion of the series and it said, nothing connects the country like country. You know, and that's a wonderful line. We're in such divided times, and here's this music that doesn't ask you who you voted for, doesn't ask you where you live, doesn't ask you how much you made, doesn't ask you what your sex is. It just says, you know, when, when Hank Williams uh, writes, I'm so lonesome I could cry, there's nobody on the planet that doesn't know uh, what he's talking about. When Johnny Cash says, I still miss someone, we all understand what, that, what he's talking about. And I love, and all of my work has been this. It's been for everybody. And, and and country music is in many ways the stories of people who feel like their stories aren't being told. The people, black and white, who built America, who made it happen, male and female, young and old, across the country. And so when you celebrate that, you got an opportunity to re-remind us that there's too much pluribus and not enough unum. Mm. And I'm in the business of unum. That's a quote <laughs> that Arthur Schlesinger Jr. Uh, said, you know. And the last episode is called Don't Get Above Your Raisin, which as you know is an old Southern phrase, don't get too big for your britches, mm -hmm. don't forget where you came from. And I, I think what's so good about country music, it has never gotten above its raisin. And it's always reminded us to be down to earth, to be authentic, to be ourselves, to tell the truth, to respect the others, to respect that. And when that happens, then, then there's nothing keeping this um, amazing republic from doing anything. Tell me, what was the biggest surprise that you had about country music that when you finished the project, you looked back and said, wow, I would never have thought of that. I think it's that how central women were to this story, that the original American lead guitarist, his mother, Maybelle Carter, she invented it, she started it all, and it, it goes down to the present. And you can talk to rockers today who learned how to play guitar playing Wildwood Flower by the Carter family, you know? <laughs> That's wonderful to me. The fact that the banjo's from Africa, I didn't know that, and that all of the early pioneers of country music, um, Jimmy Rogers, uh, A.P. Carter of the Carter family, Bill Monroe of bluegrass fame, Hank Williams, the Hillbilly Shakespeare, Johnny Cash, the Man in Black, all ha uh, had African-American uh, mentors. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, if I had to pick one thing, I just wasn't prepared for how moving 
this was, that this, this music, three chords and the truth, Harlan Howard said, right. meaning this is not complex classical stuff, but the truth part, it means that it is presenting to us universal human themes, the joy of birth, the sadness of death, the broken heart, uh, falling in love, falling out of love, missing somebody, all of it, seeking redemption, all of these things are part of our daily lives. And country music is, is simple enough that you can hear the lyrics and it's speaking. All, all the musical forms are talking about it. You go to Aria, it's talking about, you know, the joy of birth and sadness of death and falling in love. Um, but I love the fact that this is a homegrown American art form that, that, it, that, it, that it comes from us. And it reminds us that we've always been a mixture of things, that we've always been stronger because we're an alloy. And whenever anyone tells you, oh, we can only, if we just took this metal out, we'd be better. This would be truer American. It's just not true. It weakens that alloy. And I, I love the complexity of the country music story, even as it is three chords in the truth, telling us stuff that, that, you know, I had a woman come up to me and said, that eighth, avenue, uh, eighth episode, I had, um, I had four good cries. It's cheaper than therapy. And I said, yes, ma'am, it is. It's free on PBS. You know, it's, it's a remarkable series. I hope everyone in America, if they've not already seen it, they really should. Even if they're not country music fans, they may not think they are, they will That's be. That's right. People came up and said, well, I'm, I don't really know about country music or I don't like country music. And I said, I made this for you. I know the country music fans are going to watch and they're going to like it and they're going to probably have arguments. Why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you use that song? Or why isn't my guy here or, or that? And that's great to me. That's It's good to have that sort of conversation. But I want to bring people back to this authentic American music that reminds us why we agreed to cohere uh, in the first place. And I was just at a book signing and somebody came up with 30 books and 30 DVD sets, and I sign them all. He said, Christmas is done. Christmas shopping wow. is done. I, I would say, I can't think of a better gift for anyone. There's this wonderful big book that's a part of it. I'm holding it up now, Ken Burns Country Music. It is available along with the, a complimenting book, as I just showed you, at shoppbs.org. Now, this is a film that is worth having in your collection. I'm absolutely promising you that. And I want you to be sure to visit kenburns.com. Learn a lot more about his documenting of America and the great filmmaking team that he works alongside. You can also follow him on Twitter at Ken Burns.